Mr Speaker, can I start by thanking the Prime Minister for his statement? And can I say straight away that in the days and weeks ahead, I will be seeking to convince him and this House of Commons that we should put our faith in the recommendations of Lord Justice Leveson that were delivered to us today. I am sorry the Prime Minister is not yet there, but I hope to convince him over the days ahead that that is where we should go. We should put our trust in Lord Justice Leveson's recommendations. Let me, let me begin, Mr Speaker, by paying tribute and thanking Lord Justice Leveson and his team for the painstaking, impartial and comprehensive way they have conducted this inquiry. And I thank Lord Justice Leveson for the clarity with which he has explained his report today. Most of all, though, I want to join the Prime Minister in paying tribute to the innocent victims who gave evidence to their inquiry, people who did not seek to be in the public eye, who suffered deep loss and grief, and then faced further trauma at the hands of the press. Bob and Sally Dowler. Mr Speaker, it is easy to forget now, but without the revelations last July about what happened to them and to their daughter, and their courage in speaking out, we would simply not be here today. Jerry and Kate McCann, who suffered so much and showed so much courage. Kate McCann, whose daughter remains missing and who saw her private diary published by the News of the World for the sake of a story. Mr Speaker, they gave evidence to the inquiry to serve the wider public interest, and I'm sure the whole House pays tribute to their courage. Amen. And it is they who must be at the forefront of our minds today. Mr Speaker, much has been written about the reasons for this inquiry. A free press is essential to a functioning democracy. The press must be able to hold the powerful, especially us politicians, to account without fear or favour. That is part of the character of our country. But at the same time, I do not want to live in a country where innocent families like the McCanns and the Dowlers can see their lives torn apart simply for the sake of profit, and where powerful interests in the press know they won't be held to account. This is about the character of our country. And, Mr Speaker, it turns out there never was just one rogue reporter. Lord Justice Leveson concludes that a whole range of practices, from phone hacking to covert surveillance to harassment to other wrongful behaviour, were widespread, all in breach of the code by which the press was supposed to abide. Now, I recognise the many decent people who work in our country's newspapers, and not every newspaper did wrong. But Lord Justice Leveson concludes, and I quote, it is argued these are aberrations and do not reflect the culture, practices or ethics of the press as a whole. He says, I wholly reject this analysis. Now, this will not come as a surprise to many people, including in this House. But as Lord Justice Leveson also concludes, there has been a persistent failure by politicians to respond to public concern about the culture, practices and ethics of the press. Mr Speaker, we must all take our responsibility for that. And the publication of this report is the moment when we must put that right, upholding the freedom of the press and guaranteeing protection and redress for the citizen. As the Prime Minister himself rightly said at the Leveson inquiry, if the families like the Dowlers feel this has really changed the way they would have been treated, we would have done our job properly. Well, I agree. Let us be clear, Mr Speaker, about Lord Justice Leveson's proposals and why they, why they are different from the present system and why I believe they should be accepted in their entirety. He proposes what he calls a genuinely independent regulator with effective powers to protect and provide redress for the victims of abuse. But he also gives the responsibility for establishing that system to the press, as now. That's why statute is important because he provides a crucial new guarantee which we've never had before. He recommends that the media, media regulator Ofcom ensures that the system that is established passes the test that we would all want applied, that it is truly independent and provides effective protection for people like the McCanns and the Dowlers. And to make this guarantee real, he recommends that both Ofcom's role and these criteria of independence and effectiveness will be set out in statute a law of this Parliament. That's why we can get to a truly independent regulation of the press guaranteed by law. I believe Lord Justice Leveson's proposals are measured, reasonable and proportionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We on this side unequivocally endorse both the principles set out and his central recommendations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We support Lord Justice Leveson's view that Ofcom is the right body 
to carry out the task of recognition of the new regulator. We support his proposal that the House should lay down in statute the role of Ofcom. And we endorse Lord Justice Leveson's proposal that the criteria any new regulatory body must meet should be set out in statute. Without that, there cannot be the change we need. And Lord Justice Leveson is 100% clear about that in his report. Mr Speaker, let me just say this. Lord Justice Leveson has, I believe, made every effort to meet the concerns of the industry. Now, there will be some people who say this report does not go far enough, frankly. They will say it won't work because the press won't cooperate. I believe that the press, therefore, has a major responsibility to come forward and show they will cooperate with this system, a comprehensive reform of the kind that Lord Justice Leveson proposes. He also says, Mr Speaker, that if we cannot achieve a comprehensive system involving all major newspapers, then we should go to the necessary alternative, which is direct statutory regulation. I believe that Lord Justice Leveson has genuinely listened to what the press have said. He has acted with the utmost responsibility, and editors and proprietors should now do the same. Let me also say, because the Prime Minister didn't touch on this, that Lord Justice Leveson also reaches important conclusions on the need to prevent too much influence in the media ending up in one pair of hands. He proposes there should be a continuous scrutiny of the degree of media plurality and a lower cap than that currently provided by competition law. Will the Prime Minister, when he gets up to reply, uh, take this forward? Lord Justice Leveson, as the Prime Minister also says, makes specific suggestions about greater transparency about meetings and contacts between politicians and the press. He says they should be considered as an immediate need. I agree and I endorse the proposals, as indeed uh, the Prime Minister uh, did earlier on. Mr Speaker, let me say I welcome the Prime Minister's offer of immediate cross-party talks on the implementation of these recommendations, and I'm grateful for the conversations that we've already had. But let me say to him, these talks must be about implementing these recommendations, not whether we implement them. I want these talks to agree a swift timetable for implementation of the proposals, agree to legislate in the next session of Parliament starting in May 2013, with a new system up and running by the end of this Parliament, i.e. at the latest 2015. And, Mr Speaker, by the end of January of next year, we should have an opportunity, and we will make this happen if necessary, for the whole House to endorse and proceed with the Leveson proposals. I believe, Mr Speaker, we should and we can move forward together wholeheartedly now. We have had 70 years, seven reports, which have gone nowhere. Now is the time to act. Twenty years ago, let me remind the House of what David Waddington, then the Home Secretary, said twenty years ago. This is positively the last chance for the industry to establish an effective non-statutory system of regulation. Mr Speaker, the case is compelling. The evidence is overwhelming. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to make change the public can trust. There can be no more last-chance saloons. And in acting, let us remember the words of Bob and Sally Dowler at Leveson. There is nothing that can rectify the damage that has been done to our family. All we can hope for is a positive outcome from this inquiry so that other families are not affected in the way we have been. Mr Speaker, on behalf of every decent British citizen who wants protection for people like the Dowlers, who wants a truly free press, a press that can expose abuse of power without abusing its own, we must act. Yeah.